I've got some shocking news for you. Not everybody in the world is exactly the same as you are. In fact, if you're a business owner, you are in a minority of crazy individuals who decided to go and start a business, run a business. And as a leader in business, it's critical that you understand both from a self-awareness perspective, some of the things that make you different, and also have the tools in your leadership toolkit to understand what drives and motivates your team. This week, we're looking at the framework I use when I do leadership training to look at decision-making and communication preferences. We call this Think, Feel, Know. We all make decisions in three areas. However, we tend to have a preference for one over the others. And when we just apply our preference into the wider community, we often create frustration and miscommunication with people who come at it from a different approach. So let's go through, help you understand the think, the feel and the know to work out what your preference is and to see how you can apply this in your team. So let's start at the beginning. Where in your body do you associate thinking? And most people answer that question talking about their brain. So in a thinking space, we want words and data. The communication tends to be two-way dialogue, lots of questions and answers back and forth. And if you think about buying something technical, maybe an iPhone or a laptop computer or a car if you're not a car buff, you want to get into that detail, you will often make that decision in a thinking space. In a feeling space, it's a different process. Now, where in the body do we associate feeling? And of course, it's, it's in the body or I often draw that as the heart. So when we make a decision in the feeling space, we want more pictures and stories. Emotions work better with one-way communication, either us talking something out or having pictures and stories wash over us. It's why when you go to the cinemas, you have a much more emotional reaction than if you sit there and watch something on the television while playing with your phone. The one-way communication gets you into your feelings. And you think about when you go to dinner and you need to make a decision about what to eat. Nobody says, what do you think like for dinner? It's What do you feel like for dinner? So we all have all of these three, and this is what separates Think, Feel, Know from similar tools like Myers-Briggs, DISC, those kind of approaches that tend to say you are either or. With this, we are all, all three. And that means we're in a position to better understand people who are not like ourselves. The third area is our knowing, our gut feel, our intuition. You make intuitive knowing decisions. It tends to be very, very quick. The communication style needs to be bullet points. It's all about context. And that gut feel is what drives so many entrepreneurs and business owners to go out there and to make a decision. You can't think through every aspect of business. You need to make some fast decisions, take some risks and feel comfortable doing with. And so the challenge for a lot of business owners is that they will often employ thinkers or feelers who then get frustrated when you as the business owner make all of those knowing, intuitive decisions. So which of those three is your preference? Are you primarily a thinker, a feeler or a knower? Think about your spouse, or partner, which is their preferred decision-making style. Think about key team members, key clients. You can run this exercise a hundred times and we'll give you a link at the end of this video to actually go online and do the diagnostic indicator to give you an idea of not just which is your primary, but how strongly you have that preference. What's your percentage across think, feel and know? Because by having all three, by understanding the strengths of those that we work with, we have the opportunity to connect with them in their decision-making style. If I, as a business owner, am quite knowing and intuitive, but my business partner or my CFO is quite analytical, I know I need to communicate with them there to get the outcomes that I want. And ideally, we can find a middle ground. I'll give you one last example of where I see this causing so much frustration and where the opportunity really lies. It's when you've got a leadership team or perhaps a board, a group of individuals tasked with making key decisions who have different preferences for decision-making styles. So you've got that analytical person who comes in with the words and the data, the spreadsheets. Here are my recommendations and here's the detailed approach to how we're going to tackle it. About 30 seconds in, the knower has already made their decision. They have the experience, the gut feel to go, this is what we're going to do. They've tuned out. The feelers, want the time to process this. 
They're trying to pay attention. They want to be respectful to the data that the thinker is providing, but by holding them in a data space, they're not getting a chance to actually process it. They go along with the decision on the day and come in next time, the next board meeting, and say, actually, no, no, I've changed my mind. Not because they're being difficult, frustration, it's just that your process was not designed to give them the space that they need. It didn't take into account all three decision-making styles. And when you can take all of that into account, you will find that you make better decisions, you communicate better decisions, and your team make the same decisions and come along on the journey with you.